Uh, okay, hi everyone. Um, thank you for coming today to attend our presentation. Um, my project is called Lampshade. So the basic setup of a lampshade that I'm envisioning, um, there is a stand with a light bulb sitting on a plate. And on this plate, there will be an um, inner bounding surface and an outer bounding surface um, that enclose the light bulb. And this thickness between the two surfaces form the lampshade. So there are two main functions of the lampshade. The first one is it acts as a sculpture when the light is turned off because it just stays displayed on the stand. And when the light bulb is on, it casts projections on the wall functioning as a shadow maker. So because of this dual functionality, I've divided my presentation into two parts. The first series would be lampshade as sculpture. So um, a big part of owner's class involved learning um, many different grasshopper plugins, which I've never really picked up before. And so um, part of my project was trying to be intentional about using each of them and understanding um, how each of the algorithms work instead of letting it like have its um, innate aesthetic take over. So um, because of that, I did not start off by defining a part and then build it up accumulatively. Instead, I started with the plugins themselves. So for the first series, Lampshade as um, Sculpture, I used Pufferfish and Boyd as the two main algorithms. Pufferfish generates 3D lattice subdivisions between input geometries and Boyd emulates swarm behavior. So the two swarm behavior motion vectors I used was adhere, um, where agents move towards each other in pre-specified group numbers and also stick where you can reference the geometry for agents to move towards. So um, I had to set up combinations of agents and reference geometries to stick to. So these are the first two combinations that I came up with. Um, so in the first combination, the agents are generated from the outer surface and then they would flop inwards to stick to the inner surface and combination two is the other way around. And these are the geometries, the lampshades that were generated. And after a while, um, visually I noticed that there was some, um, like, they reminded me of certain things, so they acquired nicknames like Lantern. Um, and then I went on to explore um, how we can use the pufferfish generator lattice to create um, more specific target geometries for the agents to flock to. In this case, it would be the outer points of the twisted boxes. And these were the resulting geometries. So um, yeah, a big part of this series was learning how to control swarm behavior. Um, so they don't always meet the target geometry. They have to, um, you have to like carefully tweak the number sliders for the strengths of each uh, motion vectors. And um, interesting thing was that you can also um, change the sliders in real time. So you can cause them to derail. And overall, this is uh, the nine um, lampshades generated. And I picked four of them to, to evaluate. And this is their corresponding plans and elevations. And so um, series one, because they are sculptures, I relied on visual judgment to rank them. And so I ranked them based on scaffold core relationship where as you can see now, the, the, you can see two parts emerging. One is the inner core, and then um, there's an outer scaffold on each of them. And the second criteria was organicity. And then uh, thirdly was neatness and control, uh, which was quite important to me because um, with a lot of plugins, I feel they can do a lot of stuff. And sometimes it can just 
like the computer takes over instead of you. So that was part of my criteria. And with those criteria, these were the two um, iterations that emerged as uh, so-called the best. And in the second series, we view lampshade as not only sculpture, but shadow maker. So here there's an element of functionality. So how do we an analyze the shadows they cast? I um, set up a basic uh, system where um, there's a pro projection dome around the lampshade. And then I project the lines radially outwards before projecting them back onto a plane um, as though it was a vertical wall. And then here I offset the lines to trim the plane. And so this gives us um, uh, some areas to work with where the shadow percentage um, would be one minus the trimmed area over the original area of the plane. And this allows us to create the first numerical goal, which is the target shaping capability. So um, let's say I wanted a shaping capability of 60%. Um, I just take that minus the, um, the current shadow percentage and I can minimize that value so that it's as close to my target as possible. And secondly, um, apart from functionality, um, I was also trying to quantify an aesthetic um, attribute of the pattern generated, which, um, so I, I found that when the void sizes were more varied, it was more interesting compared to when they were more uniform. So then um, I created a metric to um, allow me to increase the variation between void sizes. And so the Grasshopper plugins, again, that I um, would use for this series were originally Pufferfish, Boyd, and Octopus um, because Boyd gave promising results in the first series. However, um, I found that it was incompatible to run within Octopus because I needed to manually start the anemone loop. And also Boyd involves real-time slider adjustments, which Octopus just can't handle for now. So uh, I replaced it with just manually computing um, the forms that I derived uh, in what I call pseudo void. So this is just um, a comparison with how I'm managing to do it in, in place of void. Um, it, yeah, you can see that it's um, visually somewhat similar, but it lacks the organicity of the swarm behavior. Yeah. And also to add, to give more parameters for octopus to optimize, um, instead of using a rigid fixed geometry, like in series one, I um, set up um, some sliders so that I could change the base geometry That's and thereby point. changing the form. And so, for the octopus parameters, um, yeah, as you can see here, and the two goals as mentioned, and these are the results um, and the gen genetic diversity that was generated. Um, so it seems quite, yeah, so it's quite interesting because, you know, they have spread out over a large Z axis, but then when I, when I studied them one by one, I realized it wasn't that diverse to my eye. Uh, so just to run through, these are, some of the shadows and their corresponding sculpture objects. And when laid out in a grid, you can see what I mean when um, what the computer captures as genetic diversity, I can't really tell from my human eye. What I'm seeing is two main families, um, the one on top and below. Um, and as in series one, I selected four to focus on and to evaluate. And so these are their corresponding sculpture objects. So now in the evaluation, there is a numeric element. So I could easily give those rankings. And then um, I gave a sculptural presence ranking as well. And so this is what emerged as so-called the best result. So um, yeah, as sort of a, not really conclusion, but more of, because this is like a work in progress as always. Um, I find it interesting how, so series one and series two are both um, like 
series one relies only on visual judgment and series two has an element of numerical goals so that we can better judge its functionality but um i'm currently still preferring the results from series one and i guess what i've learned from all of all of this is um Ten minutes. It oh okay uh yeah last sentence um is that it it is very important to have a very tight system um, before this uh, before um, optimization can give you a best result and um, I have a sentiment that it might be best to narrow down as much as possible to the aesthetic form that you visually like before using optimization to, to just tweak it to hit certain um, functional goals yeah so um, I would love to hear your comments on that. Thank you. Floor is open for discussion. So your intended functionality for this structure is um, light. Sorry, what did you say? Um, could your, you repeat? Your intended fun functionality um for this is um light right the oh yeah we we don't really it would be great if we could uh in your evaluation process be able to see the light and how it comes out which we understand it's difficult in the absence of uh physical models but could you describe um a little bit the hierarchy uh between your uh, your evaluation criteria for example goal number one is the shading capability but how do you define this shading capability because lighting this could be about what area does the light um can what area can it light what is the type of diffusion so do you does that mean packing many parameters into that or Right, so for the purpose of this optimization, I kind of, uh, if I go back to this slide, yeah, I simplified um, shading capability with this simple formula. Initially, I was intending to, um, you know, take a, take a screen capture of like a rendered image and then use bitmap processing to, um, to really determine the shading capability, but it was, again, hard to integrate or like, I did not have the skills to integrate that into an octopus loop. So I did it in a more um, primitive way where I just use projections and a, and a line offset. And then, um, so the, the line offsets would then um, sort of be standing in for what would be shadows. And then I just took like a, a difference between the original plane area and and the trimmed um, plane area as a, as a new numeral for the shading capability. So. Ines, just a quick hint. You can, you can maybe describe your project in a slightly different way, saying it's because at the beginning of the presentation, you said it's, the, it's a design of an object as a sculpture and you're designing the shadow pattern or light, uh, yeah. right? So these yeah. are kind of like, you know, j j just a hint in there, which may, which the, all of these may refer to slightly different things. So just a little okay. hint. Okay, okay. Yeah, that, um, I'll, I'll jump in. Again, beautiful object. I'm super glad you invited me to this, and these are awesome to see. Uh, the um, I actually you had one slide that you showed. You now these are the computer generated ones, and this is the one that like I went in there and tweaked it by hand. Um, and I actually like the one that you picked way more, or the one that you generated yourself, than the other ones that are just computer generated. Um, I don't know if you could pull that slide again. Yeah, the manually completed one to me is way more interesting. Um, because it just adds some degree of variability that is maybe not obvious, uh, but but maybe I'd like to hear from you. Like, what what do you, what is it about the manually to you that is more interesting visually, um, 
And then my, my sort of second comment to that is uh, a little bit related to what I said about the bow. I think that we, I would like to see the human in the loop a little bit more. Um, so, so part of what shading does is just, you know, whatever, pre prevent the light from being too intensity or maybe focusing the light on specific parts of the room, but also to prevent a, a person from directly staring at the light bulb because that would blind you. Um, and I think that element's missing from it. And I think that that determines a lot of the sort of kind of space of lampshade design is making sure that you don't blind people and mm -hmm. somehow you kind of didn't talk about that at all. Um, right. But yeah. So what do you like about this one? Uh, so wait, you said you preferred the manually computer one and whereas I said I prefer but the oh you don't boy yeah <laughs> yeah i, I mean i was trying to <laughs> uh, interesting yeah because i don't know there was like there is this level of organicness that the boy algorithms captured um yeah which gave curves instead of lines and i found that more like yeah, it's it was more mystifying in a way. Okay, there, there were again like two different slides, right? So in this one, there is the uh, Boyd generating these organic forms and then you're drawing straight lines and you prefer yeah. the Boyd one. But there was another slide in which you said you like generation series one as opposed to series two and series one was more influenced by your decisions, series two was more influenced by uh, computational optimization. Am I correct? Yeah. So let's see the let's see those. Do you have yeah. So go go back to that slide. I think like Marcelo picked up what you said there. When you was have that the, the the very last slide? Yeah. Towards the end, you have like two designs, which is from series one and one design from series two, and you said you prefer the series one versions. Uh, yeah. I think Marcelo picked up what you said here. So yeah, uh, that's fair. I understand, right? So this is great because in the first slide you prefer one and then the other slide it's not, you know, like the, the numbers or it's you, you just pick stuff depending on what you think or what you see uh, looks better or works better. Oh wait, sorry, I might have misunderstood. I, I liked series <laughs> one in both. <laughs> I, I guess I guess it yeah. doesn't matter, but I think the I think yeah. the dichotomy of your um, I, I I don't know I find that the best computational things there's always a little bit of the hand in the end you know when you go in there I, not not even just as a selection process but also as like doing kind of a final little tweak um, mm -hmm. and I think you sort of encounter that which is which is good and cool to see. Um, I think we have time yeah. for one last comment if there's any. Can I make a quick comment? Uh, again, a very interesting exploration, an interesting object to start with. Uh, to begin with, um, I just want to say this, that I think your initial base models are gorgeous. And I would buy one of those, just the, you know, the, the three-legged stand with this sculptural kind of transparent light with the inner mm -hmm. surfaces. Those are really beautiful. <laughs> and in fact, this is not, this is again, not a critique of your work, but I think they're much more beautiful than the final results. But that's not a critique of your exploration because your exploration was about learning how to use the software and you learned a lot by using the software. But along those lines, I think what's most important is, you know, what did you really learn from using these plugins and what works best manually and what works best from, um, you know, a digital of you and you started to talk about that and I think that's really instructive and really you know more important than what I think about you know the object as an aesthetic object <laughs> but I just wanted to throw that in I thought your starting point was really good <laughs> <laughs> okay regardless of the final ones uh, but there was a, a point of confusion I think at least for me in this project and that is that you use well you said you wanted to to uh, produce a light that was uh, a sculpture, so that was one goal, an aesthetic sculpture, and and the other goal was to produce something when the, when the light is turned on, produces shadows, and then you started talking about shading, and at the end it got really confusing about this whether you're interested in shading, which is what Marula was talking about, or whether you're interested in producing shadows on the surfaces, and that doesn't right. have anything to do with the shading capability of the light. 
So for me, that was a confusing part of the presentation. And I was, okay, I see. I was following the shadow trajectory, which is, could be independent of the shading, but maybe I misunderstood. But again, it was a really interesting exploration. You clearly learned a lot. And from that point of view, it's the, the results were really excellent. Oh, okay. Yeah. Thanks for bringing it up. Yeah. I understand where the confusion is coming from now. I think, yeah, I've been using shading and shadow capability kind of interchangeably and yeah, it's, yeah, it's interesting to see it from that perspective now. Um, yeah. Can I jump with a super last comment? Yeah. Yeah. It was just Terry just said. Uh, so I think that now that we get what your intention it was a little a little better, I think that the main difference between the initial sleek uh, volume uh, and, the, and these ones is the shadows they create in the environment. And you could you could show how you deal with shadows through a shading system. And this could be about the shadows that they leave on the floor or on a wall that is close to that. Um, so I would, I would be very interested in seeing a transition from no shadow to a lot of shadow, which is probably what your, what your, what the system does, starting from a very sleek um, surface where the, there's a very even distribution of material and then breaking it down to these very complex uh, structure and seeing the levels of shadow. Uh, that's our mm -hmm. comment. Okay, yeah, thank you. Thank you very much, Ines. Great thank job. You. Thanks for being persistent all throughout the semester and doing this, you know.